Welcome back to the Pontypridd High School workshop. The first consideration before any job is health and safety. For the demonstration I'm about to carry out, I'm in a controlled environment here. And I'm aware of the hazards and the risks and keeping myself safe. We haven't got no vehicles or whatever passing around. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to remove my high-vis uh, jacket for this demonstration and I'll be leaving the rest of my PP equipment on. This assessment replicates a model assignment that we put together which is called Sunny Cove Lodge. On part of the south elevation on Sunny Cove Lodge we have a damaged coin. This needs to be rebuilt so students would need to be able to rebuild the coin in a controlled assessment within a workshop area. This demonstration matches the success criteria for the assessment, the practical assessment for the WJC qualification. Ultimately, this is what you're working towards. These are the two main structures that we use to practice bricklaying. The rack first, then the coin. The reason why we do the rack and we do the rack first is it's a lot easier to start laying your beds and laying your joints and to, to adapt the technique and the hand and eye coordination to be able to gain the skill level required. So the more you practice on the rack, then you can go onto the coin. And what we need to aim to achieve for the final assessment is the coin built into the door frame. We do ask within the success criteria that the door frame is tied in or built into the, to the new coin that the students need to build. For this we just use a bit of 4 by 2 timber with a 2 by one strap, a wall connector. Wall connectors can be fitted to any background, whether they're screwed, drilled or fixed in to the timber door frame. Once these wall connectors are fixed to the timber, the angle brackets slide in to the connector and you bring it down and every course that you build gets connected. There are lots of different brick types. Uh, a lot of them can be very expensive, but it depends what you want to buy and what you're looking for at the end of the day. The first one we got here is a concrete common brick. This is usually made for, for load bearing and is rendered. Then we've got a face brick here, which probably would be quite expensive. It's got a nice uh, line to it and a nice colour. So this would be the face of the brick. Also you'll see holes in the top. That's a core. That's called the core of the brick. When the mortar's being built and the wall is being built, the mortar will actually go down into these holes, which, which will help to bond it and strengthen the wall. Then we come onto a brick which we've got a frog in the top. This is a lighter brick. Still got a face on the front, still class as a face brick, uh, face brick, but this is not as strong as this brick would be. Over a few years this will probably crumble and this would last probably 15 years longer than this brick would, would last. However, it is used as a face brick and this is called a frog of the brick. Same thing, same principle, when the mortar is laid, the mortar goes down into the frogs and then it will give us strength to support the wall to make it strong. Before we start the assessment, we would need the mortar. The mortar we use today within a workshop environment is a training mortar. It's made up of sand and lime. There's no cement contact in there, so it doesn't go off. We keep using this over and over again by just adding water to it. Okay, we need uh, something to, to carry the mortar while we're doing the, doing the task. What we use is a, is a milk crate and then a sport board. The milk crate helps support it off the ground so you're not bending down to the floor at all times. It's, it's helping you with your back to support your back while you're carrying up the task. What we need to do then, this board 
would be dry and it would absorb all the moisture out of the creamy mortar that we've just made. So what we do is add a little bit of water to the scoreboard. With the scoreboard being wet, it prevents the moisture from soaking into the board. So it lasts you a lot longer than you would if you put uh, the workable mortar straight onto a, onto a dry board. This is a product which is called Art Mix. It's a mortar plasticizer. You need to add this to the mortar while mixing before you actually use it and build the wall. This makes it more workable and gives it a nice creamy texture for you enable you to roll the mortar correctly. First of all, before we start, a little tip would be not to overload the board because we need to adapt the skill of rolling the mortar before we can lay any brick. So what we would need to do is keep the mortar to the right hand side of the board. You take, pull a little bit away, probably the same size as your trowel. That's what you'd need. And the roll of thumb. Then you roll the mortar and then you lift it up. So do it again. And you roll the mortar. As that mortar is rolling, it's getting more workable. The technique takes a little while to get used to, but don't worry, you'll get it. This is what happens if you don't add mortar plasticizer to the mix. You need to adapt this technique before you even start laying any brick. And I will show you how to lay the bed shortly. Before we start work, it's very important we maintain a safe working area and we make sure that we have all the materials required for the task. You need to make sure that the floor is level before you start. The next. the next stage is to start building the coin. If we take a straight edge, make sure that the door frame is nice and square and our straight edge is running parallel to the door frame. It's always handy to have a little bit of chalk and chalk the line out first. Then for this coin, we need three, come out three full bricks from the door frame. So we place a brick there, strike a line, allow 10 millimeter for a joint, then put another brick, 10 millimeter for a joint, and then your final brick. What we do then, we know we three bricks out because there's three, there was three bricks damaged on the coin on Sunny Cove Lodge. Then we use a square which goes against the straight edge. So you know that's, that's the end of your wall, that's your three full bricks coming out. Strike the line. This is one we made ourselves out of timber. You can also buy them ready made. We need three and a half bricks coming out on the south elevation so we actually need to extend the line out further. So this coin, that's the most important part, that's your plumbing point, that needs to be completely square. You've got your 90 degree angle, so that point there is the most important. And that's where you start from. You always start from that coin because that's where you've got the most plumbing points. Right, now we start to lay. We work from this coin back into the door frame. Roll the mortar, drop and drag. 
maintaining your line, your chalk line, so you can still see your chalk line. What you do then, you run your trowel along the centre, so that you'll be able to spread your mortar when you lay your bricks. Important part, a little tip, just make sure when you pick up every brick, your thumb is on the face of the brick, because that's what's important. We go down out of the corner, lining up with the chalk line, and we need to maintain a 10 millimeter bed. 10 millimeters for the bed and 10 millimeters for the joint. Next brick, thumb on the face. Two ways of purping a brick. When you lift it, small amount, flick, put it on a slight angle, center. There, that's one way. Maintain the full brick. Same again, flick, put it down and just flatten and strike the way. Squeeze the brick up, allowing 10 millimetres again. Clear up the excess from around the back of the wall as you're building. This could become the perp then for your next joint. There's your three bricks out. Now we need to level, placing the level across the bricks. We need to make sure this is perfectly level. Then we need to line it across the front of the frame. So we make sure it's running parallel off our door frame and then we're ready for our return where we go the other way. Then we have three grips coming out this way. Drop and drag across the centre. when you're using the bricks is to make sure there's no damaged face on any of the brick. For the distinction, to gain the distinction on this, the bricks have to be perfect. Joints need to be 10 millimetres, perps need to be 10 millimetres and no damage to any of the face on the bricks. Loop again, centre. Squeeze him up, ensuring you're 10 millimetres. Excess, that comes the next book. Squeeze him up. Ten millimeters. And level off, leveling off that coin right the way through. Run along the chalk line, making sure it's nice and square. By using the square that you made, just drop it in behind the back of the bricks and you can see then that 
that corner is 90 degrees. This is the first course. Now we will come on to the second course. This takes some time and quite a lot of training before you can actually get to this stage. So you need to practice the technique well in advance of this controlled assessment. Second course, make sure we come from this coin. Remember what I said earlier that this is the most important part? So that's where we come from. So roll it out. Following a lot of practice with this, you'll be able to take gauge with the eye what 10 millimeter looks like. So we start off okay. on the coin, on the corner. Remember, 10 millimetres, so you don't tap the brick down too much, otherwise you're going to end up less than 10 millimetres. So when we start off with this brick, because it's the first brick on the corner, we level this one in first. I'm judging my eye, so I know that that is 10 millimetres. And what we need to do then is plumb, although we got that level, we need to plumb the both sides and plumb is too vertical. If, if you see there where the bubble was when it was level on a horizontal face, we now plumb it up and making sure that the bubble is in between the two lines vertically as well. So that's on the one side there, you do it on the other side here, making sure that the bubble is in the centre. Now we know that brick is perfect. one end to the other, making sure that the bubble is in the centre, then we plumb this end of the wall, ensuring that the bubble is in the centre, then we run the line across the two points, so we've got a plumbing point there, plumbing point there, plumbing point there. Then we go over to the other side, running back from the corner into the door frame, drop and drag, make sure you spread your mortar. Go right up to the coin. Now we go in the other way, we'll be perping the back end of the brick. So the same thing, down on the 45, squeeze the centre, take the excess off both sides, make sure you've got a nice full joint. Squeeze him up with the eye again, 10 millimetres. Now, as you can see, there is a shorter gap there which maintains this end of the, of the brick. So we'll have to cut the brick to make sure that we form the bond. This is called stretcher bond, where we have the centre of the joint above in the centre of the brick below. Each one of these perp joints are coming in on half way along the brick. That's how you form your bond. So I level them in again. Level them in. 
Now instead of plumbing down on this end, I can just line it through with the frame because we come in parallel of that timber frame. To maintain the bond, we need a half brick to go up the side of the door frame. So I've just cut this brick. Uh, it will take you on and show you how to cut the brick later. This is my half brick to maintain the bond. So that's your first and second course. Now with this bond, the first course becomes your third course and your second course becomes your fourth course. You start it from this corner again, so this first course becomes a third course. So we just copy in of what we got underneath. And then you just keep going until you reach the top. That's the second course.
both sides to ensure that it's plumb. Just a little check to make sure. Line him through, to make sure he's lined up. We know this column is plumb. We know we don't need another tip. Make sure that these are all in line. There may be one or two just need tapping slightly, but in the main, it's perfect all the way down there in line with, with the level. And then if you check, square again, this is important, that the wall is square all the way up, okay, the wall is square, so that wall is 290 degrees, of, as we would have built into the door frame using this system, we didn't do a year on this one, I've maintained a clean working area all the way through, so that's your structure, that's your coin which replicates the south elevation on Sunny Cove Lodge. This is a finished item, but we need to go into the decorated finish just to put the finishing touches on it before it's marked for an assessment. There's quite a few types of, of joint and finishing uh, joints that you can actually use on these walls. Basically, it's a decorated finish plus to, to take the water away. We have a half round joint there, as you can see there, which is most commonly known as the bucket handle, which gives a bucket handle joint. And there's a raked out recess joint, which you use with this wheel joint there. So these are the two main common types of jointing that's used. Okay. Right, I'm gonna use the recessed pointing joint on this side. There's a wheel joint there, which goes up and down the joint. Make sure that the nail is set to the correct depth you don't want a depth of 10 millimetres on this going back because it's just too far back. So we're looking at about five millimetres set back in. And then the nail will take out the excess mortar and the wheels, it just helps to, to wheel it up and down the face of the brick. What you've got to be careful of, like a lot of this now is still a little bit wet. Ideally, it'd be better to leave this for an hour or so before you actually joint it because as I'm doing it there now, you're gonna get something that will go on the face and that's something we don't wanna do. So I'll go onto the, the bucket handle joint, half round on this side, and then I'll do a few joints just to show you, and then we'll come back in the end once I've let this dry so you can see where the finished article needs to be. use a little paintbrush or a hand brush. I'm not going to put this on there now because obviously it'll smudge because it's still a little bit wet. Either run a little white paintbrush over or a soft brush to finish it off. This is the finished assessment. As you can see, it's been pointed. I've had a little bit of time, as I said earlier, where it dried out a little bit and I was able to brush it using a little uh, paintbrush or a large paintbrush. I've done the half round jointing on this face and I did the, the recessed jointing on this face, just so you can see the difference. To gain a distinction, it would have to be up, absolutely perfect. 10 millimeters, all the jointing needs to be perfect. Uh, the face of the brickwork needs to be kept clean at all times. If it was slightly out the plumb, slightly out the level, the joints would deviate in slightly. Obviously we'd be going down then to a lower grade, maybe a pass, uh, a, sorry, a merit or even a pass, dependent on you know, the, the finished structure once the assessor marks it. Don't rush this assignment. It's a controlled assessment where you'll have six hours. But I'll be right to the end after plenty of training with you a tutor.
you will have plenty of practice, so keep practicing um, before you actually do the final assessment. This is one of the nine occupations, so if you are doing bricklaying, this is the way uh, that we would expect uh, for the success criteria to be met. Here is a few hints from me and tips from the students to help you along your way. Good luck! Uh, practicing building your rack is a great way to help develop your bricklaying skills. Before you start, always ensure that the ground is level. To ensure, when we say maintain a 10mm bed, if the floor is slightly out, you may have 10mm on one side and 20mm on the other side. So practice building. Yeah, rack before moving on to building your curtain. Also, when you lay in the bed and you lay in your bed, you drop and drag, ensure you spread it out and make sure that you put the little channel through the centre. The reason for that is you've got a nice even bed throughout. And if you ready to roll it out once and then Technique takes a little while to get used to, but don't worry, you'll get it. Now a lot of the students um, said to me that they had problems uh, with the joints. Maintaining the 10 millimeter, and to maintain that is quite difficult, but over time you will be able to, um, to do it with, you know, with the eye there or thereabouts, and very, very close. What I suggest to them is that that is a little bit of timber which is 10 millimeter wide, so when you're actually doing your wall, Slot the 10 millimeter. I'm just try there to make sure that that is maintained the 10 millimeter, and the same with the bed joint. They just keep that in their pocket at all times. So when they build it, they just use the timber. So they know this is 10 millimeters. But let's say we are only practicing, it's only training. A lot of this will come further along the train if you, if you do, uh, decide to do quickly and uh, to do it as a career or an apprenticeship. Um, so yeah, that's another little. Tip. To save you measuring all the time with the tape measure, what we do is sort of construct a gauge rod. The hardest thing I found in brick lane was keeping the 10mm gap correctly. Using this gauge rod will help you do that. A brick, the majority of bricks are manufactured in this country are 65mm. Then you've got your 10mm for the joint at 75mm. So you start off at the bottom with your 10mm. Then we do a mark at 75, then your 10, then 75, then 10, and 75. We mark it out with a pencil, and then we just score it with a with a saw, just to maintain to keep that gap on that joint. So these replicate the bricks, and these replicate the joints. So when you actually stand every course you you lay, every course you lay, you just work your brick work into these. So as you can see there, it's sitting nicely on the bottom and my 10mm joint there will be. It's quite easy for to use, keep it close by, instead of using the tape, once you've measured it and you've marked it out, it's basically use it as a marking gauge. Point in the last part of the task to give it a decorative finish. My little tip for pointing is to always start from the bottom up. When you're levelling your bricks, make sure you try to tap in the centre of the brick and not on the ends. Make sure you slightly tap it, don't go too, um, too mad with the, with the trowel. Face. Never hit the brick in the face. If you hit the brick in the face, you could chip it. So for this assessment, rather than cutting them and making sure they're 100% complete, 
but it is an art to cutting these and it does take a bit of a bit of getting used to. So you can turn the brick around as long as you're not too much sticking into the, the cavity you'll be fine. Hello, my name's Rob. I'm the site manager on Uskalawurn School in Clannishan for ISG. Uh, we're currently building a junior extension and an infant extension on the school. Um, we're here to talk about some brickwork. What we've got on here is a traditional build uh, extension with a cavity uh, wall uh, design. 100mm uh, brick on the outside, 100mm cavity with 50mm insulation, which gives you a 50mm clear cavity, 140mm block on the inside. One of the main things we'd look for on a panel like this is consistency in colour with the bricks, uh, level bed joints, level perps. Uh, we would also check them for the whole brickwork panel being plum and level itself. The panel looks good. Internal block work, a uh, lot cheaper than the external facing work, easier to lay, sometimes can be a bit heavy. Um, we have restricted weights on the blocks, uh, nothing over 20 kg to lay. Um, once they are laid on the inside, this will then be covered with a traditional plaster, sand, cement and plaster um, and then painted with easy finish. Don't afraid to ask questions. Uh, nobody knows everything. Things change so regularly. Um, ask questions, as many as you want, 10 a day, 100 a day, it all helps and it improves your knowledge. Thoroughly enjoy my job, really enjoy what I do. Um, no days are the same, everything's always different, which gives you good variety. We need to cut the bricks to maintain the bond. So we need to cut them in half. Safety glasses, very important. So your brick, make sure you've got a nice face again on both sides. You pick a brick with no chips on. A brick, half a brick is roughly 110 millimeters. To cut the brick, you would need a bolster chisel and a lump hammer or a club hammer, as they most commonly know. You mark up the brick, 110. Put a little score line, so you can see. Place the bit on a flat surface. Make sure it's nice and square. Little tap, turn it over. Little tap there. Breaks in half, it's just a slight little score on the edge, just to make sure it's nice and square. And there's your, your half bricks. Ensure that the smooth end would be against the timber frame and the cut end would be inside because you need to maintain a nice flush area against your timber. These resources are here to help you on your journey. Good luck.